Hello, and welcome back. And it's post-commentary time again, because I suppose I should talk more at length about how Fiora's new talent arts work. I need to figure out what causes this. I really don't want to have to run Audacity in tandem with Delgado. I think I might have a solution, though. Now that I've remembered to actually look. Apparently someone's had basically the exact problem I've had, and I'm gonna need to muck with the bitrate and output and sample buffer and such. With any luck, I won't have to keep re-recording episodes like this. Anyways, I suppose I should talk more at length about how Fiora's new talent arts work. I hope I'm not repeating myself, but I don't remember saying this information, so... There are four types of drones that Fiora can equip, with two levels each. For the three damage-dealing drone types, the level 2 drones obviously deal more damage than their level 1 counterparts. The cannon drones she was originally equipped with deal ether damage in a line in front of her. They are also the default drones that she uses if she is unequipped. The current drones that I have equipped on her, the gun drones, deal ether damage in a circle area around her. The sword drones deal large single target damage over 10 hits. However, like other physical arts that do multiple hits, if any hit in the sequence is blocked, the attack ends. The sword drones are unique among the drone types in that they have a third level that can be found on a single unique piece of late game equipment. Level X. And finally, the shield drones. These drones don't do damage, and unlike the damage dealing drones, the two levels do different things. Shield Drones 1 block damage from a single enemy talent art, much like the Monado's shield art does. It lasts for 30 seconds, and is also the only drone type that Fiora's AI will not use by itself. If you want her to, you'll need to hope that a vision triggers, so keep that in mind. And Shield Drones 2 removes debuffs, and provides debuff immunity for 30 seconds. Permit me to go on a bit of an incongruent tangent real fast. Since the last episode was long enough as is, I'm going to cover the Machina Forest Collectopedia here. Machina Forest has a much larger Collectopedia page than Frontier Village, due to being a full area. Starting with the Veggie Tables, we have... Shoral Mushroom. Looks like a cold green mushroom, but is actually succulent and tasty. Which... Is it mutually exclusive? It's not like cold and green precludes being succulent and tasty. These adjectives have zero overlap. Kelp mushroom. A slippery mushroom that is sweet and healthy. And honey rhubarb. A cool, sweet, honey-like foodstuff. Most no are crazy about it. And for that row, we get Sleep Resist 3. On to the fruits, we have... Dark Mango. Often sneaks its way into boxes of sweet mangoes. Makes you feel blue. Yeah, Alright. Pure Cherry. Usually grown beside clear waters. Eating it brings clarity. Bitter Kiwi. A fruit whose undeniable bitterness yields to eventual deliciousness. And Juicy Grape. Insects are attracted to its seeping juices, Ew. so it's hard to get a good one. And for this row, we get Sky Gloves. In the category of flowers, we see... Enigma Lotus. Wonderful form when budding. Valued as an ornamental flower. In the original recording, I got super distracted by that vine picture popping up in the bottom right corner. Humming nettle. Black petals like musical notes. When they sway, you want to sing. Princess daffodil. The favorite flower of princesses of old. It's even named after one. Which is a really interesting aside about its etymology that I'm not qualified nor energized enough to get into. 
Black Iris. The stem has hidden thorns that will injure anything that touches them. For this row, we get Blaze Defense 3. For animals in Magna Forest, we start with Venomous Lizard. It has a shiny body, but people avoid it as it looks like a venomous lizard. This is a weird one. They avoid it because it looks venomous, not because it necessarily is venomous. But then why call it venomous if it's not? Honestly, the Collectopedia entries can be a little confusing sometimes. Fossil Monkey. They call this monkey a living fossil, maybe because it's rarely sighted. The Soft Sea Cucumber. A tropic dwelling sea cucumber. Its softness makes it hard to catch, which is hard to believe. It's a sea cucumber. They don't move all that much? And finally, Ash Fox. A long haired gray fox. These are often kept as pets. With this row, we get more obsolete armor. In terms of bugs, Macna has Scarlet Ladybird. A bright red ladybird. A decent eye is made from its defensive secretions. Here's an odd one. Shield bug. After dreams of dancing in the sky, this species turned blue. Now the Hades beetle. A black hue so dark you feel like you're being drawn into an abyss. No mentions of it actually being a beetle, just its color. Well, I guess the shield bug didn't mention its buggy status, just that the species dreamed itself blue. And the benign cricket. Flies like a shooting star. A moving swarm is called a meteor. As a reward for this row, we get slow three. And for the strange collectibles, we have Gravel Disc. Shulk was guessing what this was. Not unlike a mirror of gravel. Forest of Gossip. Dunban scowled as he named this. It makes a lively sound in the wind. These strange descriptions are always so strange. Such as... Lemonade Sky. Charla looked wistful as she named this deep blue stone of nostalgia. Tell me, what color is lemonade? Is it commonly blue? No? Then why are you naming this blue thing after lemonade? Anyways, for that row we get debuff plus two. And for completing the whole page, we get an Iron Wall Nasher. Just a monstrously obsolete weapon. Wow. As always, I've got links to my Kofi and Redbubble in the description below. If you like what I do and or want my art on your things, you can like, you can comment, you can subscribe. Alternatively, a better use of your time and money might be providing aid and support to Palestinians, as they suffer under the latest atrocities of an 80-year-long genocide. I'll put a link for that in the description too. For now, it's showtime! Today, we're back in Valak Mountain, on the hunt for Dunban's fourth skill tree. It's a sequence of three quests, starting here with bad timing, just behind this I- ah! Today, we're back in the Aerith Sea area. We're doing Melia's fourth skill tree, and that's definitely what was planned. Yes, sir. We're here at the Aether Plant to help Jirak with the damaged turbine. Yes? You transported over here from the lighthouse, didn't you? Did the lighthouse manager tell you about the problems there? Well, we've got our fair share of problems over here as well. Some hoads attacked and damaged one of the turbines. Hmm, a problem. Melia, you normally have good ideas. Any thoughts? I am flattered that you think so, but this is no ordinary problem. Do you think you could help me? 
Then I'll be able to get to the lighthouse. Do you want us to help fix it? This is an amazing machine. I'd love to learn more about it. It must seem amazing to your people. But it's not a recent creation. It has been here a long time. Pioneer technology is also fascinating. It still looks brand new and works perfectly even after so much time. Uh, although it is broken now. I have two problems that I would like existence to solve. First, I need you to help repair the wind turbine. Then, I want you to punish the Hode leader responsible. Are you willing to help? Trouble at the plant. One of the wind turbines was attacked by Hodes. Help resolve the ether plant problem. Doing so would involve teaching the head of the Hodes a lesson and using the turbine access panel in the ether plant at Earth Sea to fix the plant. So this quest is actually three quests. The overarching quest, Trouble at the Plant, requires two sub-quests, Mend the Plant and Punish the Hodes to be completed in order to be completed itself. Punish the Hodes. Find the Hode Refuge and teach the Hode Leader a lesson. Defeat Funeral Gazra at the Hode Refuge in Aerith Sea. And Mend the Plant. Fix the wind turbines that the Hodes broke. Collect three pieces of luxury Hode wood from Hodes at Aerith Sea. We need three pieces of luxury hode wood to fix the wind turbine. The hode leader, Funeral Gosra, is on an island near here. It won't be easy, but I believe that you can succeed. Best assured that your issue will be attended to with haste. Yeah, let's give it our all! I figured out what was causing the issue where sometimes I'd start talking and the recording would be really low for a half second before jumping to normal volume. See, I'm using Lighthost, a VST manager, to enhance my voice input into Voice Meter Banana so that I don't have to do as much post-processing. I wasn't really finding anything in the VSTs themselves, and another idea, disabling Windows audio enhancements, wasn't viable because I couldn't find it where the internet said it was. Then I had an idea while looking at Voice Meter. If I'm processing my voice with the VSTs, noise gates and compressors both, what use is voice meters inline gates and processors? And turning those off fixed the issue. Hooray! I don't have to deal with that anymore. Anyways, there ahead is the Hode Refuge. We already have two luxury Hode planks, so we just have one more to pick up, which we can do while we merc Funeral Gazra in the Hode Refuge. We've been here before while collectible hunting, and we're well over leveled for this area, so none of these chumps are fixing to pick a fight with us. Except Funeral Gazra, due to being a unique monster. We're a higher enough level than it that this is really isn't that big a deal. Beyond the fact that its aggro range extends out into the water, so we can't get the battle start affinity boost. You have defeated the Hode Leader and ensured the safety of the wind turbine. How do you like that? We were amazing. Funeral Gazra, 
being a hoed riding in Orluga, drops some Orluga slacks for us, which are needed for a material quest. Not really something I'm interested in right now, though, but that doesn't really matter. Instead, before we head back to the Ether Farm, we'll pop over to this shore to try to off some of these hoads for their luxurious wood. And because the targeting mechanic in this game can be a touch, mmm, touchy, let's say, we'll accidentally end Oluga too. This targeting issue is something that I think Xenoblade has always had throughout the different games, where you try to target something you're fighting, but wind up targeting something in the far distance instead. Honestly, I could have stopped Shulk from running off like that with the party commands, but eh. These guys are fodder for us at this point. Here's a story regarding that targeting issue. In Xenoblade Chronicles X, which I wish would get a sequel, and maybe a port to the next console, I was just starting out, working on the early game missions, but this is Xenoblade Chronicles we're talking about here, with its cavalcade of high-level early area monkeys. So I tried targeting an enemy, as you do, but instead of targeting the enemy at the center of the screen, I targeted the super monkey, which was behind me. That's probably the most egregious example of this that I've come across with these games. It was just the darndest thing. With more luxury hoed wood in our pockets and a couple of minor quests completed, we head back to the ether plant and check in with Jurak. Oh wait, wait, trading. There are technically two trading options for luxury hoed wood. Northeast of the Fountain of Eternity, Elior begins offering it for trade at three star area affinity. And Merlaise offers it as well as his overtrade item at 2270G. But he only offers it while he's in the Aerith Sea map, which is during his mom's quest, Bring Back My Son. So, no longer an option for me. But no matter. I already have all the luxurious wood I need. Yes? You collected all the materials we need? That was quick. This is a really great help. I hate to ask, but could you please use them to fix the wind turbine? Random strangers? who may or may not be qualified for this kind of work? Just slot the planks in place and it should work. Thank you. Yeah, just, just shove them right in there. You'll be fine. I'm sure trusting a group of weird strangers to handle our ancient machinery will be just fine. Also, you can see that the panel is visibly cracked from the attack. How does slotting random planks of wood into this thing fix it? Unclear. Don't worry about it. What is this witchcraft, Jarak? Yes? Thank you ever so much. The wind turbine seems to be back in perfect working order. The wind turbine has been fixed with the materials we collected, and is working fine now. Yes? It appears you have done everything I asked of you. The wind turbine is once again working perfectly thanks to you. And I can hear the Hode leader's death cries all the way from here. I won't have to worry about him anymore. I hope I was of some help. Melia, it's okay to be happy. You put in a lot of effort, after all. My apologies. I am not used to such behavior. You are most kind, Fiora. I will try not to let those hoes do any more damage. I am so glad I turned to you for help. The ether plant is working again. Now Jurak should be able to fix the lighthouse. Or will he? Hold on there. Can... can you hear that? What's that flapping sound? Sorry, I've got to hide! Take care of those things! Surprise! 
It's a Hode attack. Cronies of the defeated Hode leader want revenge. Defeat two Confusion Echidnos at Aerith Sea. Look at these goofy bastards, dangling in baskets underneath some screwed up pterodactyls. So, in the last episode, I tackled Ricky's fourth skill tree quest, which, that was a weird read, which required five lots of echidno jaw gristle. But farming echidnos was inconvenient, so I just traded for the four that I needed. But there was actually a better way to go about this. Melia's fourth skill tree chain quest. Chain, qu quest chain. Yes, cool. I'm not going to re-record that. That stays in. Defeating these two nets us a silver chest, which I think guarantees the jaw gristle. And the next quest, which is Melia's fourth skill tree quest, another weird, weird read, has us fight a sequence of three echidnos, which each drop their own silver chest. Bing, bang, boom, four lots of jaw gristle. Exactly what I needed. Eh, sailor bee. Hey, what up, coward? Yes. That was terrifying. They were really out to get us. They must have come for revenge. I suppose it's only natural. You did kill their leader. It's a good thing you were here. If I was by myself, those things would have eaten me for sure. Right. I'm going to repair the lighthouse. Thank you for everything you have done to help. I hope I was of some help. Of course you were. Sirith Lighthouse will be in danger if I don't go soon. I must hurry. You defeated the cronies of the Hode leader, so the Ether Plant should be safe. Finally. And with that complete, we can jump back to Sirith Lighthouse to net ourselves Melia's fourth skill tree. A quick jaunt through the teleporter to the top. Skipping the time I spent fruitlessly checking the shop, and we can get started. How's things? Hello? You are Hyantia, aren't you? I am. Sorry for asking such a silly question. You're certainly a cute one, but look like you can handle yourself. There is no need for flattery. What is it you want? Oh, you must be shy. Do you know the job of this lighthouse? Of course I do. It serves to suppress the activity of the monsters at Aerith Sea. That prevents them from attacking Alchemoth. That, that noise is awful. It is a very important installation. You're right. Everyone knows the lighthouse has had some problems recently. So I asked, uh, Dirac to, um... Why are you acting so nervously? Th th that's not important right now. It will take quite a lot of time to repair. If any monsters attack, we'll be completely helpless. I see. I suppose we could protect you all until the repairs are finished. That's an excellent idea. Are you sure? Trouble at the lighthouse. There are more problems with the lighthouse. The light won't come on. When darkness falls, monsters will attack. Defend the Lighthouse. Defeat three Decay Echidnos near Sirith Lighthouse at Aerith Sea. Only at night. Thank you so much for this. It's fine during the day, but the monsters are active at night. We would all be so grateful if you could protect us at night. We're relying on you. And, with a brief check-in with the new affinity level between Shulk and Fiora, we jump ahead to Nightfall. Look at this pretty face. Kill them. Honestly, there's not much to say about this, since we're at such a higher level. But of note is how Shulk and Fiora just don't do anything for a while at the start of the fight. It's a little strange. Anyways, dead, dead, dead. And talk to Shaolin. We are all very grateful. 
Thanks to you, the lighthouse could be repaired. I knew I could only trust someone who knows how important it is. Splendid. I'm glad we could be of service. It's at this point when the thought strikes me. I should have been showing the dialogue that occurs when you speak to one of these quest givers as a different character. Oh well, too late now. I'm not going back. The lighthouse once again has all four of its lights. Hopefully, Earth Sea will be a little safer from now on. I am extremely grateful for your help. Think nothing of it. We simply did what we had to do. I have... one more thing to ask of you. Hmm, I expected as much. What is it? I would... like you to thank Jarak for me. You can tell him yourself. There is no reason to be reticent. I... can't. If there's no reason to be reticent, then can you not tell him? Why me? You should tell him yourself how you feel. I decline your request. I understand. You are reticent as well. Do not speak as if I am like you. I am not reticent. It's just that... I am unaccustomed to doing such things. You have to get used to it at some point. You must not go through life always hiding your true feelings. I said I am not reticent. <laughs> Good luck. And with that, we crown a new champion of the most contrived skill tree name drop in the requisite quest runoffs. Man, that was unnatural. The lighthouse is safe and has been fixed. Now it lights up the whole area. We get a Night Glow Staff, which is probably long outdated, and the Resin Skill Branch. How's things? Do you know about the door yet? There is a sealed door at Cromar Coast, south of this lighthouse. It has strange markings on it. I wonder how it can be opened. How's things? I'm afraid history is not one of my strong points. Maybe only members of the Ministry of Research can open it. It is an ancient site with strong links to the Hyantia. Maybe there is some way to open it. I feel like you're just repeating yourself over and over, lady. There's a few minor side quests around the lighthouse that I hadn't nabbed before. I'm living near the lighthouse, so I can research Aerith Sea. But I'm having trouble finding a few of the things I need. I want to study Hiln coin purses and Doomsday poppies. Which is just the weirdest combination to study, but alright. Do you think you can help me? So, you'll help me? Wow, thanks! I'm so glad I asked you! Hey. Um, this is very difficult for me to ask, but there are a few more things I want to study. I just need Handos Antennae and Old Dragon Spines. Oh yeah, and Pink Asparagus. Sorry for asking so much of you. Are you still willing to help me? I'm ever so grateful. Well, so kind. Maybe you could consider becoming my assistant. Ah, uh, nothing. Thank you so much. At the base of the lighthouse, the lighthouse keeper also has some quests for us. The monsters have been really active recently. It might be because the lighthouse got damaged? Or did it get damaged because the monsters became active? Well, I'm not sure which came first, but I want to make this place safe. You think you could take out some palty chromars for me? Monster Quest 1! I appreciate it. You guys look tough, but this is some unique terrain. Be careful. What is it? We should really consider getting rid of more monsters. I need you to exterminate some Malaysia Chromars as well. How about it? Could I have gotten these when I first got to the lighthouse? And I just didn't for whatever reason? I, I don't know. I really appreciate it. You don't know how much help you're being. What is it? It's still not enough. I need you to defeat one more. It's called Flabbergasted Jerome. Take care. He's a strong one. 
flabbergasted Jerome is on the lower level of Hovering Reef 5. He's got a resistance to physical attacks, so might be a handful. Just bear it in mind. And with those collected, let's take a look at Melia's new skill branch. The Resin skill branch itself provides an increase to Aether Defense. Palace Guard improves block rate by 15%. Heavyweight Expert improves Aether Defense by 30 for each piece of heavy equipment worn. Unadorned Beauty increases Strength, Aether, Agility, and Max HP by 20% if no gems are equipped. Mental Barrier reduces the damage taken from Area of Effect Aether attacks by 25%, and Arcane Aura reduces the amount of aggro accrued by 30% when she has an aura active. And there we are, another new skill branch under our belts. And, luckily for post-commentary Sean, the rest of this episode is swimming, for the most part. We're unlocking the map! I have a few things to discuss, which I can use the swimming time for, but that's basically it. Initially, we'll be heading southwest from Central Seal Island to pick up Hovering Reef 9, before taking a big plunge to head even further south to a secret area that scared the shit out of me. First, I want to touch on the Resin skill branch again. Do you remember last episode when I commented that I felt other characters would take advantage of Charlotte's Reliance skill branch better than she could? Well, here's the thing. Reticence has pretty good synergy with the party tanks, Ryan and Dunban. Not that it's bad for Melia, not at all. But it's also really good for Ryan and Dunban. Specifically, Heavyweight Expert and Unadorned Beauty. As a face tank, Ryan takes hits to the face and shrugs the damage off, due to a combination of high health and lots of armor. He's one of the two party members who gets access to heavyweight armor without skill linking. But heavy armor has two weaknesses. One is that it doesn't provide a lot of ether defense. Ergo, linking heavyweight expert onto Ryan counteracts that weakness. The other weakness of heavy armor is that it rarely has gem slots. Unless it's a unique armor with a pre-existing gem, a full set of heavy armor generally precludes any gems being equipped to Ryan outside of on his weapon. Therefore, linking unadorned beauty onto him mollifies that weakness too, so long as you don't have gems on his weapon. And you know another reason why you might not be able to equip many gems? If you're buck-ass nude. I've mentioned the naked Dunban strat before, his Wisdom skill branch boosts his agility stat and aggro generation by a lot when he doesn't have any armor equipped. No armor equals no gems, which means that Unadorned Beauty is also an excellent backup skill for a naked Dunban, so long as he don't have gems on his weapon. And let's not overlook the benefits of Palace Guard and Mental Barrier. Mental Barrier reducing area ether damage is an excellent boon for any character, and a higher block chance from Palace Guard would go nicely on Rhine. All good stuff. This scared the shit out of me. I had entered a fugue state where I wasn't really thinking, and the loud noise spooked me so bad. <laughs> Anyways, Ferris Cave has a lot of collectible nodes. Also... These should demonstrate our sincerity. But why would Vidian want two pieces of marine marble? She must be under great hardship.
From Soldnar Seal Island, we can head directly south to the Cromar Coast that Shaolin mentioned. There is a unique enemy here that is extremely useful for grinding affinity, Stormy Belagon. Belagon has a spike effect that inflicts sleep on anyone who attacks it within a close distance. Being debuffed causes characters to lose tension, and at low enough tension, they can be encouraged to return them to base tension. But this also increases affinity between the characters, so you can just keep farming sleep to boost affinity for as long as neither you nor Belagon die. Which would be a problem at my current level because of how damn strong all the lizards on the outside coasts are! From the center gate, we can head south to the secluded island, which is surrounded by high-level fish enemies. What's with the high level fish enemies? We can't even fight while swimming until Xenoblade 3! Also, there's an ether deposit here, guarded by those monstrously powerful lizards I mentioned before. Why are they here? North from the High Antia tomb is Anu Shore. And, coming from this angle, a handy little cave that leads to a higher level of the shore. Not a lot here, besides more monstrously powerful lizards. But we do find a unique monster that we needed to hunt for at Alchemoth Challenge Quest. Lightspeed Sonid. This represents no problem whatsoever. This should be easy. Don't get careless, guys! Battle soul! Alright, I'm feeling it. It resisted Mind Blast, unfortunately, so its damage spike effect was on for longer than I'd have liked. But its significantly lower level meant that waiting for Shulk's AI to get it together wasn't as big of a deal. And now, finally, the last point on the map. Prison Island itself. From Central Seal Island, we swim west? I think, I think that's west. Until we trigger the Bionis Occipital's location marker. What the hell is an occipital? Hold on. The occipital bone is a flat, trapezoid-shaped bone that houses the back part of the brain. It is located at the lower back of the cranium and is one of seven bones that form your skull. Its most important role is protecting your brain, it supports the muscles of your neck, 
protects the brain's visual processing center and acts as the connecting pathway from the brain to the spine. Huh. Well, why, why is it there? Why, why is it in the middle of the sea? I don't... Is Prison Island the occipital bone? I don't know. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't understand this. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. There is literally nothing out here. Why did this have to be a location to unlock the map? It's such a nightmare. But there we go. The full Aerith Sea map. Unlocked in all its massive watery glory. 7.8. Too much water. I've mentioned before how I manually filled the map out when I first played the game on the new 3DS. And you saw how damn slow the swimming is. Now imagine swimming to every point on the Aerith Sea map. I did that. It was awful. Don't be like me.